Americans celebrate our national heroes in ways that have become the envy of the world. Those that honor us with their achievements, their courage, their sacrifice, and their record-setting performances. Yet every year, our nation sets aside the 11th day of November to honor our most important heroes, our military veterans. Through their dedication, sacrifice, deaths, dismemberments, and unwavering devotion, we have reaped the opportunities and blessings of this nation and have enjoyed the freedoms and liberties afforded no other people on earth. Throughout our history, they have stormed beaches, advanced on bunkers, dropped behind enemy lines, and created strongholds that no enemy could break. They have dropped bombs, launched rockets, and hurled grenades. They have thrown flames, fired rounds, and rained fire upon our enemies from the sky. They have endured the coldest winters, embraced the steamiest jungles, and survived the hottest of hells. They have crossed the roughest seas, the hardest deserts, the highest mountains, and the thickest jungles. They have endured separations, captivities, injuries, and even loss. Yet they have never failed. We owe every measure of our respect and every ounce of gratitude for every beat of sweat and drop of blood they have ever shed. During times of great crisis and even direct attacks, Americans have answered their nation's call. On December 7, 1941, during the attacks on Pearl Harbor, or September the 11th, 2001, when terrorists struck the innocent in New York, Pennsylvania, and the Pentagon. Those called to serve left families, farms, fame, and future to put feet to words like duty, honor, and country. America is strong because they were stronger. We are free because they never surrendered. We are blessed because when character and courage mattered most, they never turned their back on those at home. November the 11th is a special day, but by any measure of lives lost, sacrifices made, and services rendered, every day is Veterans Day. Now let's set the record straight. There's no argument over the choice between peace and war, but there's only one guaranteed way you can have peace, and you can have it in the next second. Surrender. Admittedly, there's a risk in any course we follow other than this, but every lesson of history tells us that the greater risk lies in appeasement, and this is the specter our well-meaning liberal friends refuse to face, that their policy of accommodation is appeasement, and it gives no choice between peace and war only between fight or surrender. If we continue to accommodate, continue to back and retreat, eventually we have to face the final demand, the ultimatum. And what then? When Nikita Khrushchev has told his people, he knows what our answer will be. He has told them that we are retreating under the pressure of the Cold War, and someday, when the time comes to deliver the final ultimatum, our surrender will be voluntary because by that time, we will have been weakened from within spiritually, morally, and economically. He believes this because from our side he's heard voices pleading for peace at any price, or better rest than death, or as one commentator put it, he'd rather live on his knees than die on his feet. And therein lies the road to war, because those voices don't speak for the rest of us. You and I know and do not believe that life is so dear and peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery. If nothing in life is worth dying for, when did this begin? Just in the face of this enemy? Or should Moses have told the children of Israel to live in slavery under the pharaohs? Should Christ have refused the cross? Should the patriots at Concord Bridge have thrown down their guns and refused to fire the shot heard around the world? The martyrs of history were not fools. And our honored dead who gave their lives to stop the advance of the Nazis didn't die in vain. Where then is the road to peace? Well, it's a simple answer after all. You and I have the courage to say to our enemies, there is a price we will not pay. There is a point beyond which they must not advance. Winston Churchill said the destiny of man is not measured by material competitions. 
When great forces around the move in the world, we learn we're spirits, not animals. And he said there's something going on in time and space and beyond time and space, which, whether we like it or not, spells duty. You and I have a rendezvous with destiny. We'll preserve for our children this, the last best hope of man on earth, or we'll sentence them to take the last step into a thousand years of darkness.